So first off, I'd like to start off just reminding you a little bit about sine and cosine. We've thought about sine as height. Remember as you're going around that unit circle how high it is. So it starts with a height of zero, gets up to a height of one, and so on. Graph of sine, the parent function looks like this. And cosine, we thought of that as width. So it has a maximum width to start with. Width goes to zero to negative one. And so that's what this looks like. And these angles in here are 90, 180, 270, 360. A couple pieces of vocabulary I want to add uh, just, just so we have them. The amount of time it takes for it to repeat itself is the period. And that's true for, for any sinusoidal. So we know that our period is 360. It takes 360 degrees for this thing to start repeating itself. Um, the midline, in this case, it's at zero. That's the middle of it. And then the amplitude is the height. And in this case, the amplitude's one. So last time, we moved the midline around by adding something to the outside of these. So what I want to do instead of adding subtracting is multiply and divide. So let's take something like uh, y equals 3 sine of x. So notice what this 3 is going to do. This 3 is going to stretch this up down in the, in the x, y direction. I'm sorry, in the, just the y direction. So what that's going to do is that's going to mess with my y values. It's going to triple all of my y values. So instead of going from uh, 0 to 1 or 0 to negative 1, it's going to go to 3 or negative 3. That's my amplitude right there, right? That's my stretch off the midline. So these would stay the same, the x values. The y values will all get multiplied by 3. So if I go to sketch this, <laughs> bring that back. So if I go to sketch this, I still have my 90, 180, 270, 360. But instead of going just up and down one, it goes up and down three. It's been stretched by three. Sine is height. Height starts in the middle. I like to draw those in. Up to the extreme, back to the midline, down to the lower extreme like this. So that would be a, a sketch of that one. Notice if this was one half, it would make it smaller. If this was negative, it would flip it like this. Let's do something like that with cosine. Negative 5 times cosine of x. So what that's going to do is that's going to multiply all of those x values by negative 5. So instead of starting at the top, it'll start at the bottom. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. So again, what this will do is this will flip it in this direction and stretch it by 5. So if I go to sketch that one, cosine, I still have my... 90, 180, 270, 360. But now it's going to stretch up to 5, down to negative 5, right? There's my amplitude. And now since cosine usually goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, all those are multiplied by negative 5. So it's negative 5, 0, positive 5, 0, negative 5. So it starts at an extreme, but it starts at the negative extreme because it's been negated. Still goes up to the midline, next extreme, back down. Sorry about that. So this will look like that. And I like to move that across like that. Great. So there's my multiplier on the inside. So I'm going to write something here. Y equals A times, I'm going to say it could be sine or cosine of X. That's my amplitude, that's my stretch in the y direction. Okay, um, and that makes sense because that's like outside the function. Just like if we were adding something outside the function, it moves it up down. Multiply outside the function, it stretches it up down. So now let's mess with the left-right values. So we're going to mess with the period a little bit. So here is another one. y equals sine of 2x. So here's what's going to happen with this 2x. This is kind of like a speed regulator. It lets you know how fast it's going. So this is going to happen two times faster 
then my parent sign happens. So there's my parent sign. This is going to be twice as fast as that. So one way to think about this is you can take that period of 360 degrees and divide it by that multiplier. Sorry. So 360 divided by 2 is 180. So the period of this now is 180. So this actually repeats itself in 180 degrees. Let me, let me think about another way to do this. My, my parents' function for, for sine is 0, 90. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start to let this list this this way. 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. This speeding it up, it makes everything happen twice as fast. So what I'm going to do then is divide all these by 2. So 0 divided by 2 is 0. 90 divided by 2 is 45. 180 divided by 2 is 90. 270 divided by 2 is 135. 360 divided by 2 is 180. So now what's happened is it's compressed in, in, in this direction. It's compressed in this direction. I think of it like an accordion direction. So if I go to graph this, there's been no change in the x y in the y direction, so it's still negative one to one. But these values are now 45, 90, 135, 180. So uh, one to negative one. And since it's sine, sine's its height starts in the middle, goes up. And it goes like this. So if I have a multiplier in here, what I do is I, I divide by all those x values by it. Notice what's happening is this repeats itself in 180. And if I went out all the way out to 360, it would do it, it would get through two cycles. So this is how many cycles it's doing in the typical period. Let me do another example like this. Y equals cosine of one third x. So now that one third is going to slow it down. In other words, if I if I take 360 and divide it by a third, 360 divided by a third, that's the same as 360 times 3. And let's see, 360 times 3 is 1080. So this is going to have a period of 1080. So here's what I can do is I can take my originals, 1, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, and divide them all by a third, which is the same as multiplying by 3. So 0, 180, uh, and then 180 times 3, 540, 270 times 3, 810. 360 times 3 is 1080. So now those are my, my x values for this cosine. Notice what's happening is it's slowing it down. It's actually only getting through a third of the cycle in 360 degrees. And then 1 to negative 1, cosine's height, uh, cosine is width, so it's going to start at the extreme. Jeez, sorry. There's a sketch of that. Now if I throw them together, it's pretty easy. Notice like if I had a 4 out here, that would stretch it this way. So that would make it, I could redraw the whole thing, or I could just say like, that just makes it go from negative 4 to 4. So let me do one example that has both. Uh, how about y equals, so y equals negative 7 times sine of 3x. So let's think about a couple things. So first off, that 3x. So if I start with 0, 90, 1, 270, 360, things are happening three times faster. So I'm going to divide all of those by 3. So 0 divided by 3 is 0. 90 divided by 3 is 30. 180 divided by 3 is 60. Again, three times faster. Everything's happening earlier. 
270 divided by 3 is 90. 360 divided by 3 is 120. Now this negative 7. Let me think about that. A sign usually starts in the middle. So it usually goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all of those by negative 7. So 0, negative 7, 0, positive 7, 0. These are my two pieces that I'm going to graph. So notice that these affects those x values, this one affects those y values. And then I could sketch a graph of that. It's going to go between negative 7 and 7. So it starts at 0, goes down to negative 7, up to 0, up to 7, back down to 0. Put those in just little guardrails, and it should look like that. And notice it's flipped upside down because it was negated because it was multiplied by negative 7. All right, good luck. Give it a go.